Hey guys, Octane Restorations. Is your petcock leaking? Let's address it. <laughs> hey guys, got that out of the way. So today, as it suggests, we are going to be fixing a leaking petcock on this GL1500. If you saw underneath the motorcycle at the beginning of the video, there was gasoline on the ground. It was just a little bit, but there was still gasoline. And this little drip pan underneath the petcock is soaked. All of that is gasoline. And I believe it came from the petcock. That was my diagnosis. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to rebuild that bad boy. This is what I got in my rebuild kit. It has two of the rubber diaphragms, a spring, and then screws. Really the only things I was needing were the rubber diaphragms. Like I showed you earlier, my drain pan was wet, so that's there to catch fuel that leaks from the petcock, and then it drains down in a safe area to where it won't drain down onto the motorcycle, catch fire, because that'd be a fire hazard. Who wants that? But mine was wet, and I had a consistent stream of gas running down that drain tube at one point, so I diagnosed it as a leaky petcock. And this is how you fix that. This is your petcock right here. To access it, you want to take off your seat, and then you want to take off that plastic radio cover cowl. You're also going to want to take off the gas cap. As you can see, that petcock is right there. It's vacuum operated. So you want to take off the gas cap, and then you want to disconnect the fuel lines. It'll give you a little more wiggle room, but you can do this without removing the petcock from the motorcycle. You can do it with it still on. And I'm just going to show you how. So, like I was saying, get the fuel line off, get the gas cap moved out of the way. just gives you a little bit more room. Disconnecting the fuel line at the fuel filter is the easiest way to get that fuel line off. If you saw part 9 of the 1996 Goldwing Restoration series, nothing really new is covered in this. This is just a tutorial in case you're just trying to fix the leaking petcock. So you take those four JIS screws out, kind of look like a Phillips, and then you have this two-part diaphragm, this plastic cap, and this spring. You don't want to throw away that plastic cap or the spring or the metal piece that connects both of those diaphragms because the rebuild kit normally just gives you the rubber pieces and Phillips screws. I'm just showing you how I took it out. That's how it sits in there. And of course, with the spring on the plastic side. Right there. So whenever you're rebuilding, that's how you're going to want to reassemble it. But it's a very straightforward process. As you can see, these rubber seals were looking pretty bad. I couldn't see any obvious cracks or deformations. But as you can see, it was getting dirt and stuff in there. I maybe could have cleaned them and got a decent seal, but the kit was like 20 bucks for this 1996 GL 1500. So I just went ahead and I'm just gonna rebuild it. You just pull it out right there. And there it is. So the kit does come with both the small circle and the large circle. You just pull them out of there. They just have a little nipple that goes in the hole. And you just got to press that nipple into the hole until it's seated. You can use a little, a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of grease. But what I do is I just use a little bit of saliva. That little nipple on it. I just put a drop of spit on there. And that gives it enough lubrication to get inside the metal. I'm trying to be as careful as I can with taking that top part off because the top part didn't look torn or didn't have any holes that I could see. So in the future, if I had to reuse one, 
like for one of my personal bikes that I'm restoring, I might try it. If it'll save me from buying a rebuild kit. But with rubber parts, I'm always iffy about reusing rubber parts. Just because, you know, they get cracked and torn and everything like that. So there's that same, you know, little rubber nipple that just goes into that metal tube. Again, just a little bit of saliva. Gives that rubber a little bit of lubrication whenever you're putting it on the metal. And there you go. You're going to fold up the big circle just like a reverse of whenever you pulled it out. If you're having trouble with the rubber sticking, like making a good connection around the edge, if it's sliding, you can use a little bit of dielectric grease. Just a dab. You know, this is a vacuum operated petcock, so you don't want to just seal the thing completely. But a little bit of dielectric grease will help keep that rubber in place. Theoretically, with new rubber, you won't have to. But again, if you need it, I nearly did because <laughs> as you can see it was sliding a little bit on this but this is a new new rebuild kit so it ended up working just fine but you just want that rubber edge seated properly like it is right there and again, if you're having trouble sticking, just dab it out electric grease. And then the smaller circle goes into the motorcycle. Goes into the, into the attached petcock assembly. That's what I was saying about having to fudge with it. A little bit of electrode grease would have helped me there, but it was back in the shop and I don't want to walk all the way out there. So, get it properly seated, make sure it hasn't moved. I'm just putting it on there to hold it while I grab the spring. Because you can't forget the spring. I'm going to take it off, make sure it didn't move. And then I'm going to attach the spring to the plastic cap. Now it's time to put your four JIS screws back in that really resemble Phillips, but they're not Phillips. You do want these tight because you know you don't want any fuel leaking by but you don't want them too tight if they're if you over tighten them there's a good chance that you'll strip out the head of this and that's the last thing you want to do so you just want it really snug but you don't want to turn it to the point to wherever you're stripping out the screw so we got it all done now time to just reassemble everything Gas cap, fuel caps, put all your hose clamps back on, your plastic radio cover cowl, the two little covers that go by the handlebars, and then the key ignition cover, and the seat of course. But, that's all it is to it, pretty easy. So the leak is no more. The Petcock rebuild kit did exactly what it was supposed to. We don't have any more gas leaking from the Petcock into that little drain dish. Life is good. So again, this is Octane Restorations. Thanks for watching. Uh, 
After this point, all you got to do is reassemble it. If the video helped you, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. Thanks again. Hope you have a good rest of your day.